first sellout. Scott Jackson and John Feinstein here with you as we get ready for tip-off between ODU and VCU. ODU starters Marquise Godwin, Malik Curry, and uh, Xavier Green. Of course, Xavier Green was the uh, all-conference uh, performer last year, conference tournament MVP, all-conference preseason. Aaron Carver, DeJour Dickens for VCU. The usual starters, Dariante Jenkins, Mikel Sims, Marcus Evans, uh, Marcus Santos Silva, and Isaac Van. And we should note that's Aaron Carver, not Caver. That's right. Not, not Ahmad Caver, who has graduated, unfortunately, for Jeff Jones, along with B.J. Stith, the two leading scorers on that team that won 27 games and went to the NCAA tournament a year ago. Son of A.C. Carver, the fifth all-time leading scorer in Old Dominion history. And our officials tonight, Gary Maxwell, Brett Smith, and Clyde Owens. Finally got that straightened out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there were six officials in the building. We'll get to the story later. Green with the miss and rebound taken by Dariante Jenkins. ODU, good job converting on defense that time. Mikel Sims with a deep three, and he buries it. Oh, you can convert on defense all you want. Guy hits a 22-footer. You just say, nice shot. And, of course, VCU come in with some full court pressure early, as they uh, are wont to do. ODU has not turned the ball over much this season, which is obviously something VCU has done a great job of getting opponents to do. Well, one of the reasons ODU was able to beat VCU last year coming from 15 points down in the first half to win by 10 was because they didn't turn the ball over they made it a half court game and they need to do that tonight and there's a turnover although talking to, so to you coaches you know that they don't feel very confident in this half court offense because they haven't seen anything to give them confidence well, they've so been struggling to score i mean they're yeah. shooting under 40 percent for the season and under 30 percent from three-point range and that's really where they, they, they feel the loss of Caver and, and Stith because both those guys could make a shot from deep when they needed it most. Yeah, just averaging uh, under 13 is, uh, turnovers a game. There's a miss from Isaac Van from three, run down by Godwin. Good hustle. Gets it to Xavier Green, who's going to push. ODU likes to push. They want to play up tempo. This is where they're getting their points. But VC does a great job getting back. Jordan Dickens, who makes the start tonight, misses the baseline, Jay. With a rebound for Jenkins. That was a seven-footer, which I'd say is probably about six feet outside his range normally. <laughs> yeah, the bigs have really struggled. They're not the scores. Here. Not scores at all, but this year has been even a bigger struggle with uh, between Dickens and Kalu, Zikpe. You know what you're going to get from uh, Carver. He's going to be your best rebounder. Average is 10 a game. Yeah, he had 20 against St. Joseph's earlier this year. Dickens with the rebound there. ODU rebounds it well. That is something that obviously has been a weakness of VCU's. Well, one, one of the reasons that uh, they, Scott, that they don't want to play half court is because they feel like with their big guys, they're almost playing four on five, which is why they'd like to be in transition whenever they can. They missed a lot of easy layups in that game against William and Mary, particularly in the second half. Also against James Madison in that loss. And it is something that uh, they've got to rectify this season. Just two on the clock. Curry's not going to be able to get it off. And Green tries to rush it up, and it was a shot clock violation. Gary Maxwell with the call. And the confusion was that it, it most, most of the time in non-conference games, the home team's conference will assign the officials. But when ODU and VCU play, the visiting team assigns the official. But there was some confusion apparently in the Atlantic 10 office, so they sent three officials, as did Conference USA. Isaac Van deep three, and that's off the back iron. Here comes Xavier Green pushing. Yeah, you know, look. Six officials might have been a little overkill tonight, so I think they've oh, made baby. the right decision. They'll all get paid. <laughs> made the right decision. Dickens for point blank misses again to the baseline. That's what I mean. That's what I mean about his range. That was a tough shot. That was in and out. It looked like it looked pretty good actually. Here's a turnover by VCU. Here comes Xavier Green. He gets it taken away by Jenkins. So they're going to get Jenkins for the reach in. Wow, looked like he got that. That ball did look cleanly. clean. Yeah, it looked clean, but official at a better angle than we did. Yeah, he's giving Brett Smith, Jenkins giving Brett Smith a look, but let's see what kind of angle we got here. He might have gotten him on the wrist. Yeah, probably did get him on the wrist there. I, I'll, I'll go with Brett, Brett Smith's expertise over mine First there. team foul by either team here in the early going. Godwin likes to shoot. He knocks it down to two. There's a long two for Godwin, but ODU is on the board. Well, they need him to shoot. He was the eighth man when healthy last year. But this year, he's got to be their best. He is their best perimeter shooter if he can make shots. Jenkins off the back iron. Last touch by Santos Silva, so it stays with ODU. So 3-2 here, 16-11 into this first half of play. 
Godwin uh, has been struggling to shoot. He's only 27% from the floor this year, but he is a better three-point shooter than overall shooter at 34%. And that, that's, that's his greatest strength is shooting that three-point shot, but Jeff Jones needs him to shoot it at better than 34%. He needs him up closer to 40 with this team. And they're just having problems finding scoring. Of course, we'll see Jason Wade off the bench at some point. It's a spark plug for them. Nice move and take by Malik Curry to get two for ODU. Pass ahead to Sims with a layup. Sims has got all five VCU points. That will make a coach's hair gray when you make a basket and then you don't get back on defense. Curry almost lost it to Marcus Evans, who's really attacking him. Inside play by Zikpe. Zikpe, Kalua Zikpe just checked in. He scores his first two. ODU needs a big game for Curry tonight. Marcus Good. Evans, a step back three. Jeff Jones you talked about the fact that he knew it was going to be different this year, losing players of quality of Caver and Stiff. But being honest, it's been more of a struggle than he expected. Curry with the answer three. Curry has struggled mightily from three, yeah. but he buries that one. The whole team has. They're shooting under 20, 30%. Curry only has three threes of the year, 17% from there. And he was 0 for 11 against William & Mary, so that's got to feel good for him to see his first two shots go in. Santos Silva. Into a Zikpe, gets it off, but doesn't get it to go. Here comes Curry pushing for ODU. They doubled Santos Silva the minute the ball went in the post. Curry attacking, and he's going to get fouled on the way to the bucket. That should get us to our first timeout. And ODU off and running here with a 9-7 lead with 14-32 to go here in the first half. And here's a, another look at Curry's three. This is NCAA basketball from Learfield IMG College. That has been a concern of Mike Rhodes all season, is making sure to rebound the basketball, when, especially when we play good half-court defense, which is going to be critical here tonight. There's Mike. In his third season here at VCU was an assistant, Jeff Jones, now in his seventh season at Old Dominion. You talk about the five-game losing streak. He had just won his 500th game. Yeah, he won 500, and he's been stuck there for a little bit longer, yeah, little, than sure, than he expected. Longer than he planned, that's for sure. But that was their best win of the season. They beat a very good Northeastern team to get that win and have struggled ever since then. And I just caught Jeff Jones co coughing, which means that the season's really underway for him. But he's been sick all week, missed practice on Thursday. Said it was the first time since his second year at Virginia, 1991, that he had missed a practice. Wow, that's a good stretch there. And, and especially when you realize that he's been through two cancer scares. No question. And never missed a practice. Curry, by the way, converts both 65% shooters. So Malik Curry, good sign for Jeff Jones. Off Jeff to a real quick start, seven points after 0 for 11 against William & Mary. And Jeff Jones with a change of defense here showing a 3-2 zone. They've been working with different defenses. Oh, steal by Wade just off the bench. The Richmond native gets it off to Xavier Green. Curry's got the hot hand. He's going to take another heat check. you got to be kidding me. They missed that one off the back iron. That was real deep. I don't know if Jeff Jones loved that shot. I don't think he did, especially with 18 seconds on the shot clock. But Kel Sims from deep, and he goes around the cylinder and out. Jeff Jones has been using different defenses to try to change things up the last few games to try to get his team going because sometimes good defense will get the offense going. Way That's off a the terrible mark from, shot. From Green, but rebound by Wade, gets into a Zikpe who gets hammered by Corey Douglas who's checked in for Marcus Santos Silva. Also in the game for VCU in that timeout was uh, Malik Crowfield. And we're about to get Bones Highland for the first time as well as Keyshawn Curry and Vince Williams to the full. Backup five are going to be in there for VCU momentarily. This is the Mike Rhodes Army approach. He's got five starters who play between 22 and 26 minutes a game. Jeff Jones wanted that to be a shooting foul. I can see why. It kind of looked like he was going to go up with it, but anyway. And then, and then he's got five guys who come off the bench and play between 13 and 17 minutes a game. So everybody knows what kind of minutes they're going to get. Thrown away by Curry. Coming the other way is the other Curry. Keyshawn Curry for two. Keyshawn Curry 
Keyshawn Curry played really well down in Florida. Mike Rhodes is really proud of the way this kid's put in the work and improved this year and become a big part of the rotation. Mike Rhodes likes to have a deep team. First year here, he didn't feel like he had it. Last year, he did. They won 25 games. Keyshawn Curry, a sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida, has really been a big part of what they've done so far with six and two start. Xavier Green just having a hard time getting any kind of flow offensively. He's going three on the clock, and Zikpe's going to have to hurry. Throws it up to Curry. He doesn't nope. get it off. It's the second one. Two shot clock violations for Old Dominion in the early going here. But as we've talked about in the past with ECU, most coaches will tell you they'd much rather have that if you're going to turn it over than the live no ball question. turnover, you the want, dreaded live ball turnover. You, you want to. Jeff Jones actually said that to me on the phone yesterday. He said, I hate to say this to you, but we have to avoid live ball turnovers. He knew that was your hot button issue. Actually, yeah. I said the same thing to him. I said, Feinstein loves this phrase. And one for Corey Tough Douglas. Shot there. Beautiful hook shot for Corey Douglas. An opportunity to make a three-point play and give VC the lead again. And this is why Mike Roach has no problem bringing five fresh players in off the bench. Well, he, said no eight problem, in. he said no problem telling us. At times, this backup five has been better than the starting five throughout the offseason and throughout the early parts of, of games. They have pushed the, the starters. And Mike Rhodes is looking for the older guys to, to, to play less frustrated, to play more free. And just because you're an old team doesn't mean you're a mature team. It's a big stretch coming up for Old Dominion as Corey Douglas converts a three-point play to give ECU lead against 12-11 because a freshman, Jalen Hunter, the point guard number 12, has checked in and he almost threw it away there, but they do break the press. Wade taking it to the hole, passes it off to Xavier Green who gets his shot blocked. And we got a tie up. What do we have? There's a foul there. I don't know if the referee called a foul or a jump. Thought he called a foul. Yeah, it is a foul. Yeah, yeah I saw one arm go up in the air. Yeah, fouls on Corey Douglas and Xavier Green will get to the free throw line. Gary Maxwell, very experienced official. So ODU you with Jalen Hunter in a point now, the freshman out of Manchester, Connecticut. Played in every game for ODU this year. You mentioned how well Xavier Green played last year, but he was the third option Correct. offensively. So he he had more openings because of Caver, because of Stitt. This year he's the first option offensively, and he's getting a lot more defensive attention. He's still averaging 15 points a game, but it's been a tough adjustment for him. As for all of ODU's guys, even the Everybody guys who are on the up. team, everybody's playing a different role. Well, you know, Green was the... MVP of Conference USA, but again, you know, the of focus of those games of the tournament, yeah. of the tournament, and the focus was on Stith and obviously Caver in those games. Right. He did a great job, you know, taking advantage of that, but now every night he's the guy to stop. Holtz Highland attacks, and we're going to get a foul. Well, Jeff Jones thought he had a turnover there, or he was trying to sell the turnover. He was trying to sell the turnover, yeah. for sure. And that's going to be on Hunter. So yeah. freshman on freshman here for Old Dominion with. Uh, Jalen Hunter in front had, of Mark Bones Highland. Jeff had Brett Smith right in front of him, and he was trying to sell that call. That's that's an experienced coach. Bones Highland with a runner, and he gets it to go pretty teardrop there. 14-12, VCU on top. You know what I saw this afternoon? Scott, I saw a carry call. Get out. Were you, watching, you weren't watching the NBA, obviously. No, no, no. I wasn't watching Is the a NBA. high school we, game? We don't see a call in college okay. anymore. I was thinking about that because Bones Highland just took the ball and flipped it over on that drive. Bones Highland's given VCU a lot of good minutes, and he played well down in Florida as well. Wade to penetrate, and the strong take off the glass of good for the Richmond native. You mentioned in the open, his dad, the head of security. His, his dad is working here tonight. Oh, is he working Yeah, tonight? he's working the game. That's got to be interesting. Of course, Roddy Wade played at Old Dominion forward. Anybody boos his, his team, he, they might get thrown out. <laughs> That's right. His, his son. Son Ward trying to go. I thought he was going to throw it down, but as your Dickens changed his mind, they threw it ahead to Dickens. Great catch, but he's out of bounds. Yeah, that was not a smart decision because it took a great catch just to have any chance to keep the ball alive. Yeah, Jeff Jones is letting Xavier Green know about that decision right yeah. now. Unless you got Grant Hill on the other end. Good tight game to start. There's Jason Wade taking it to the hole. This is NCAA basketball from Learfield IMG College. Center, 
Freshman Bones Highland, the teardrop floater, if you will. For Dribbling with the left GCU. hand, shooting with the right. You don't see it that often, especially Pretty move. from a freshman. Pretty move for Bones Highland. Nation Bones Highland is his name, but he goes by Bones, so we call him Bones, John. Um, if he wants to be called Bones, it's fine with me. He's averaging 16 minutes a game at six points, and Mike Rhodes really likes the development of him. And, of course, he was the player of the year in the state of Delaware. He's got he plays, his first he two plays with a lot of confidence for a freshman. Very you confident. you got to like that. Very confident. They have the second unit that they're very confident in out there right now with Hassan Ward, another freshman, number 20. Eleven different players have played for VCU in the first nine minutes. A lot of trust. Also a lot of sacrifice, too. Vince Williams can't get it to go. Old Dominion's Jason Wade comes away with the rebound. Well, Mike Rhodes said what he really likes about this team is how competitive they are and how hard they are. They're all willing to play. Just wants to see him play with less frustration. Godwin's going to jack up a three, and that's going to go in and out. Rebound Dickens, but they're going to get him, I think, with a push off. Yeah, Dickens put it. Williams had position there. And Dickens used his height, but I think he also used his, his arm. Yeah, they got him with a push off. We'll get another look at it here. I didn't see it there. Yeah, it's hard to see at that angle, but it, they called it right away. Dickens didn't really put he, up much of an No, arm. he did. He so, did not get one of those what, what, who me looks. So 14 all, 10 10 to go in this first half. But I think overall, Old Dominion, John's got to be pretty happy with their start. A team that's really well, this struggled is, with this the is the pace they want, yeah. too. There's another look at the replay. Yeah, definitely there. You can see it on that one. Yeah. Got his hands loaded. Take the replay. We got a problem with the clock, clock issue. Yeah, the clock is rolling. Um, and they're moving it down. So usually in college ball, they don't play with a running clock. Normally, no. Normally, they, that's frowned upon in a lot of places for sure. So we'll get this sorted out. This will take a while. Because this will we have to figure out when the clock stopped and how long it was down for. By the way, VCU leads the all-time series 50 to 44. Again, 95th meeting tonight between these two teams. Last year, VCU was up by as many as 17 at Ted Constant Center before losing to Old Dominion 62-52. But ODU's dropped the last four here in Richmond. It was 35-18 with two and a half minutes left to go in the first half. And from that point on, VCU scored a total of 24 points. No, I'm sorry. They scored a total of 17 points and lost 62 to 52. Yeah, it was a it was a strange was game, went. needless to say. I think they were six for 11 from three in the first half and then did not make one in the second half. I think you are correct. And the only player in double digits that night was Marcus Evans uh, for VCU. ODU was led by B.J. Stith, who of course is now playing overseas, and Ahmad Kaver was the second leading scorer. But Xavier Green, I remember, hit some big shots that night. Uh, he had nine points. That's the I remember B.J. Smith missed like his first eight shots. Yes. And then warmed up as the game went along, and Caver made some plays. And, and it, but it was really ODU's defense that was the key in the second half. They said they held him to 17 points. As they're trying to figure out the clock here. I asked Mike Rhodes this week if he, if, if he looked at the tape of that game. And he said, oh, yeah, we absolutely looked at it. Yeah, he he reminded, let it get away. Yeah, he reminded his team today at the shoot-around about that game as well. And we are fixing the clock, so it's actually 10.31 to go in this first half of the 14-14 game. And VCU, Don't ask me to explain what just happened. I'm not really sure what happened either. I just know we gained time. We didn't lose time. I think they had it at 10.04 before that. I think you are correct. Anyhow, we're back to live action. Marcus Santos Silva's check back in. They might like that matchup with him against Dickens if they can get it to him. Fitz Williams in the corner, and he's short on the three. Vince Williams was actually really stroking it well today, watching him shoot around, but unable to get that one to go. It's a lot different in the game than a shoot around, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, there are blue jerseys in front of you trying to make you miss, and a lot of people out here watching. Goblin for the corner gets it blocked by Curry. But Curry, what an athlete. Great defense there by Curry. But Santos Silva almost saved it. He almost did, and uh, we're getting some Subs for Old Dominion is Malik Curry is going to come back in for Jalen Hunter. And Xavier Green is going to sit down as Joe Reese is going to check in, the sophomore from St. Louis, Missouri. Illinois transfer. 
Review. Gonna have to hurry here with just eight of the clock. Wade looking for a screen. Now just four of the clock. He's got the jacket up. It's gonna be way short. Air ball. It's not That's Jason three. Wade's range. Three thirty second violation. Jeff Jones not happy with Curry, and that's that's a sign of inexperience. The point guard needs to take control in that situation. Yeah, Curry, you know, got off to a good start with his offense, but the playmaking part is also a big part of it too. Well, that's what Caver did. Caver directed the team. Didn't just Curry run, from run three the off point. the back iron. DCU cold from outside the arc tonight. Well, neither team's lighting it up. Right no, neither now. team is. Well, I think ODU would like this kind of game better than VC at this point. Being the big underdog. They're just having a heck of a time. Good defense offense. by Williams, and he gets fouled. Excellent team. Williams is such a good defender. Takes it away from Reese, and then gets fouled by Reese. And that was a frustration foul by Reese because he got stripped. Yeah, Reese, who averaged about 13 and a half a game, with just three points with those 13 minutes. And three rebounds. Two fouls, four apiece now after that. Williams feeds it into Santos Silva, loses it at first. That comes into a double team, and what are we going to get? Are we going to get a reach in foul? Yeah. yeah reach, reach in foul. Santos Silva got lucky there because he really didn't have control of the basketball. Yeah, they got Wade on the reach in. If they still called three seconds, he could have been called for three seconds there. He could have been called for a double dribble. Yeah. I'm not sure he bobbles it, picks You're it up, right. dribbles it again. And he's in the lane for a while. Well, Jason Wade, fouled. you know, averages close to four steals a game. And that's what he does. He comes over and he, he takes chances. He's got 28 steals in the young season. Well, I think Jeff Jones is picking his poison right now that when Santos Silva touches it, he's going to double down with the guard and take his chances on Santos Silva pitching it back out for a three. Deriante Jenkins back, and he feeds There's it to Santos Silva. Take it away saw, again. You saw the double Carver. team there. Yep, Carver does a nice job taking it away. Curry gets it out to Godwin, but quickly Ooh, that was a carry. carry on uh, Godwin. If the rule, rule still existed, that would have been a carry. Wow, that was ugly. Here's Dariante Jenkins spotting up, and he drills it. Very nice ball movement. Good look by Evans there in transition. VCU up back by three now. Curry's going to get double to the half court, gets it over to Wade. Wade attacking and gets it blocked. Santos Silva almost traveled, but he got it off to Evans quickly enough. Evans needs to calm down. Sims That's traveled. Walk. Got a little too quick there. The right idea, though, was the defender coming out on him. They were trying to score six points on that possession. So turnover for VCU, but VCU with a three-point lead thanks to Dariante Jenkins from deep. This is NCAA basketball from Learfield IMG College. Back here at Sold Out Siegel Center where VCU leads ODU 17-14. Scott Jackson and John Feinstein with you. John looking at the numbers again. The rebounding advantage continues to grow for Old Dominion. They're keeping VCU to one shot for the most part, but ODU's not making shots. On the other side of VCU, before that last three, it only hit one of them, but now we're a two for eight beyond the arc. Well, the other thing that's hurting VCU, is, besides shooting seven of 18 from the field, uh, it is the fact that they've had four turnovers. and. Old Dominion's had seven, which is more, obviously, but VCU counts on more turnovers. Yeah, and ODU has, um, at this point, not been able to find any rhythm in the half-court offense if they're not getting anything in somewhat transition. The other thing really is struggling. ODU has as many points off turnovers at this point, six, as VCU does. Here again, ODU, shot clock dwindling down on them. As they throw it into Dickens. Dickens off the glass, though, and good. Well, Santos Silva took a risk going out there to attack the guards and couldn't rotate back in time to stop Dickens inside. Usually he's very effective that way. Tujor Dickens certainly uh, giving them better minutes coming in the second time around after starting tonight, getting off to a little bit of a slow start. Isaac Van with a nice move behind his back, but he gets tied That's up. Good defense. Yeah, really good defense by Curry to get the jump ball. The possession error goes to Old Dominion. Really good defense there. You know, Isaac put the ball on the floor in the lane for too long. Somebody's going to come after it. You know, Isaac Vance's offense has been slow to go this year. He's only scored in double figures twice. Of course, he's still their most important defender on the perimeter. He usually gets the best player on the other team. But Van is uh, his offense just has not come around at this point. 
And that's all confidence. And Jeff Jones said he's talking about his own team, but confidence isn't something you take off, take off and put back on like a coat. If, if it falls off, it can be hard to get back on. Curry attacking it off the side of the backboard. That, that was not ugly. a good shot. No, it was not, but it stays with ODU. Curry's on the ground, and there's, I believe they're going to say it's 9 on the clock. I don't think they're giving them a new shot clock. No, was, they should. Yeah, it was not a change of possession. Watch here. He just Look at this again. Flings it up. We can't see it, but it didn't hit the rim. That's a walk. It's a travel on Godwin. Marquise Godwin moved his feet a little quick there in the corner. He was about to get trapped, too. Jeff Jones looking for some offensive solutions here. So Godwin's going to come out, and Carver is going to come in. Aaron Carver, the top rebounder, had 20 rebounds in a game this season against St. Joe's. He's averaging 10 rebounds a game. Jeff Jones over there demonstrating to Godwin how you have to plant one foot when you <laughs> catch the ball. Marcus Evans with a nice move, but he hits it off his foot, but it gets to Santos Silva. Back out to Van, who thought about it. Dariante Jenkins puts it on the floor. Back out to Evans for a deep three. Off the back iron. Again, ODU getting the rebound. Jason Wade. Big guy, six foot five, playing the point. Nice pass. Good, good Barber with a pass. nice finish for his first two. That, that's pretty much his range. It sure is, and it's 18-17 uh, Old Dominion lead. Averages under four points, but ten rebounds a game. That's an uh, excellent defender. Rough foul from Curry, a silly foul, really, with uh, that far away from the basket. But that's just his first. Unless you've got a clean look at a steal, you don't do that. But here you see nice ball movement on the baseline, setting up Carver. Yeah, Zikbe with a nice pass to him. Carver with the finish, and that's been a problem for him. You finish it at the rim, just yeah. simple baskets. and. These are the little things that have uh, been driving Jeff Jones crazy. Jeff Jones told me that his team has missed more layups this season. There's a three. Marcus Evans. I'll tell you who's not going to be sad to see Marcus Evans graduate. Jeff Jones and the ODU staff. No, they will probably attend his graduation to make sure he does graduate. They saw him at Rice for a couple years. Now they're seeing him at VCU the last two years. But what yeah. I was saying is Jeff Jones said that in their nine games, they've missed more layups than they've missed in the last five years. That's incredible. And I said, are you exaggerating? He said, no. They got people with numbers to tell you that. A big bucket from Xavier Green. That's got to feel good for him. His first two uh, from the floor tonight. He's got three overall. Back to a 20-20 game. Zikpe. Double to team. Get on Santos Silva. Nice move from Santos Silva to get the two and one. And that time he spun away from the double team. And set up the layup and got fouled. I mean, Zikbe was doing everything he could to stay in front of him. He grabbed his jersey at one point, too. He's a tough guy to guard, as we know. He's the leading really scorer on this team, the most improved player on this team. And I, he just worked so hard. Mike Roach said that 23 years of coaching is the hardest work he's ever had. That's a big-time compliment yeah, when you think about the players he's coached. So he gives a lot of the credit to assistant coach Jamal Blunt. And Jamal Blunt played for Mike Rhodes and Randolph Nathan. He's also six foot nine. And, no. and, and Mike says when, when a big man coach can look the big man in the eye when he's telling him what to do and demonstrating, it's a big help. And then, oh, over there goes the call. Yeah, and that's a three-point VCU lead as Santos Silva converts the old-fashioned three-point play. But now you're right. I mean, you know, you see all these coaches that are, you know, 5'10", trying yeah. to coach big men, and it's not the same thing. And that was the last touch by ODU. Good Isaac Vance took a shot to the face of that loose ball. He's down. He's going to be all right. He got poked in the eye or hit the head. So I just got hit in the head. It's going to come out, but it looks like he's okay. But what I was saying is... I actually took uh, Ward's elbow, hit him in the head. Ouch. Yeah, he ran it into really Ward's elbow. It happens to your teammate, from your teammate. It's a but friendly fire there. Jamal Blunt was saying that, that what Marco Santos Silva is, is he, he's a throwback because he, he's an old-fashioned, get in the gym, spend hours working on your, your fundamentals type of kid. You never have to tell him to do it. Evans with a miss on the three. Jason Wade pushing for Old Dominion. Wade's going to take it. 
Hands it off, and oh, Carver can't throw it down. Here comes VCU in transition. Evans attacking and can't get it to go. That would have been a big turnaround there. Instead of being down one, being down five, it's your OVU, but they survived. Wade takes it to the hole and scores. He is so strong. He is, he's, he's a big guy playing the guard position. Not afraid. He'll go through a wall. <laughs> As Mike, or as uh, Jeff Jones talks about when you say Wade's this kind of guy that's ran through anything. That's not, not a good board. shot. That was not pretty. Dickens with the rebound. That was a freshman shot right there. And Santos Silva, uh, just as quickly as we talk about that shot, is coming off the bench to get ready to come in. That rest didn't last very long, did it? No, it did not. Hunter from the corner is a three off the back iron and rebound Deriante Jenkins. Worth noting, Santos Silva leads the team in scoring at 13-4, rebounds 9.9. He's only playing 25 and a half minutes a game. And he has, plays more minutes than anybody on the team. And this week after that miss, he was put on the Oscar Robertson Award to watch this this week as well. The honors is coming his way. People are paying attention to the production. Hard not to notice. Xavier Green from inside the lane off the mark and Curry with the rebound. Green's still struggling from the field even though he did make that one field goal. Nice, nice take, take by ten. Curry. That's a goal ten by Dickens. So that'll count for Curry. Makes it a 25-22 VCU lead with 2.40 to go in this first half. And we get a timeout on the floor with VCU now up by three. This is NCAA basketball from Learfield IMG College. Welcome back to Sold Out Siegel Center. Scott Jackson, John Feinstein with you. Is and here's it another sold, look. Out, sold Out Siegel Center yes. redundancy? It is a bit of a redundancy. Yeah. 141 times. There was the Keyshawn the Curry goaltend goal bucket that counts. For the By the way, tend. during the timeout, they introduced Lanto Griffin, who graduated from VCU, now plays on the PGA Tour very successfully, and the VCU golf team. And they took a picture. It was the VCU golf team. It was Lanto Griffin, and it was athletic director Ed McLaughlin. So the caption would be, 12 good golfers and Ed McLaughlin. <laughs> Xavier Green with a take and can't get it to go. Good defense by VCU. If you like transition defense, this is the game for you. Jenkins pulls up for a three, and he can't get it to go. And the rebound is going to be a jump, jump right? Yeah. That's a jump ball. Excellent be play with VCU. by Santos Silva to not go over the back get his hands on the basketball and create that jump ball. That's just a good, smart, tough play. Watch this here. He doesn't have position, but if, if there was a foul at all, and I don't think there was, it would have been on Carver backing up. It's only Santos Silva's second rebound, believe it or not. That's surprising for him. But ODU has dominated the boards, but VCU ahead of the scoreboard. He got a foul. Yeah. Got hit in the head. Yeah, DeJore Dickens got him across the head. And Santos Silva will go to the free throw line. And he is slowly but surely starting to do his Santos Silva thing here. Yeah, they're starting to get it to him. And again, he, double team comes, but it comes too late. And he saw the double team. That's why he pulled up with the ball, and that's when he got hit in the face. I would like to see him more often when he's in that low block spin away from the, the lane the way he did on that one play where he got fouled because when he spins away from the lane he, the double team can't come or it's certainly more difficult it's one and two so Santos Silva increases the VCU lead to four with 216 to go in the first half I'll bet by next year he'll be a good free throw shooter he's getting better he's getting better he's worked on it every year yeah. he's getting better he's just, he goes not in, good but he's, he's streaky he all stretches where he'll hit a bunch in a row and then he'll miss a few but at yeah, 56%, he certainly would like to be in the 60s or I, 70s. He I'll could. bet you as a senior he'll be in the 70s. We'll check back on that next year. Sounds good. Dickens, nice, nice move. move by DeJore Dickens. Very nice shot fake there. A lot of patience by Dickens in the post there. So ODU hanging around here in this first half. Curry with a strong take. Blocked by Dickens. And here comes Xavier Green. Back-to-back -back good plays by Dickens. Green off the glass and good. And he's got an AM1 opportunity. You know, Jeff Jones was talking about the five-game losing streak. And he said, you know, we haven't played horribly for entire games. We've just had three or four-minute stretches where you're standing there going, damn, 
why can't we play better? And right. they have not had that streak tonight. And whether they can carry it out for 40 minutes, we'll find out in the second half. Yeah, I mean, the biggest scoring runs tonight by both teams have been five points. Right. And that's one of the things that, you know, every coach says that comes into Seagull Center, hey, you got to withstand those runs from BCU. You don't want those to get out of control. Right. And so far, Old Dominion's been able to do that and, and obviously counter with some of their own. You very often see visiting coaches in this building have to take that use it or lose it timeout early in the first half, you know, 8, 10, 12 minutes in. Jeff Jones hasn't needed to do that so far. So with Green's three-point play, Old Dominion back up by a point. Go, go. Vince Williams to attack. He can't get it to go. Rebounds Dickens again. Wow, third and jump ball. Another jump ball, but this one will go to Old Dominion. Am I wrong? Has Santos Silva been involved in all three jumps? I know he's been involved in the last two. Well, the last two. two, yeah, for sure. He gets his hands on the basketball. But he's so strong. Yeah. And that's that helps VCU, even though they don't get the possession, because if there's not another jump, they'll get the ball to start the second half then. Freshman Jalen Hunter dealing with the pressure of Marcus Evans, which is not an easy thing to do. This is where Old Dominions have problems getting their offense early. And uh, they've well, you dribbled can't have 20 one guy seconds dribbling the, the ball for 20 seconds. Yeah, they dribbled 20 seconds the clock down. Here comes Wade attacking. He gets through somehow and scores. Well, that's good offense. <laughs> Jason Wade. You can get a guy to slice through the defense that way. See if VCU goes two for one here. They should. We got a foul. I believe they're going to get are they going to get Dickens or Green. We'll see. They get Dickens. And it'll be one and one for Santos Silva. And that's two on DeJore Dickens now. Nice drive there by Wade. Yeah, Wade has Obviously, he feels comfortable in this arena. Yes, he does. Very secure in this arena. Uh, he's got six I'm points. Glad you said that, not me. <laughs> he's got six points. We've got a 30 second timeout. And now Jeff Jones like Jeff takes Jones. his use it or lose it. I'm not sure he did that, but it was a. Either way, it's a kind nice of basket. Move. Yeah, it's a nice move. Yeah, no doubt. ODU uh, just 20% from three. VCU a little bit better, 25%. ODU now is up to 46% for the floor. VCU at 34%. And ODU uh, 80% for the free throw line, which is in uncharacteristically good for them. 62% free throw shooting team. VCU, meanwhile, 75% for the line. And Santo so Silva there. Jeff Jones started to put his hand on Gary Maxwell's shoulder, and then he remembered he's sick and pulled it back. Santo Silva knocks down. The first. That's a big free throw. Because as we know, he is not a great free throw shooter. One and one makes the first. And BCU will be in the double bonus in the next ODU foul. And he gets that one to go. So Santos still, like I say, could be streaky. Yeah, he's made three in a row now. Yep. Streaky good now for Santos still. He's got six. And it's a one-point game. And Jeff Jones called a play in that timeout. First, they got to get it across mid-court. And Hunter just does that. Jenkins with those long arms is really tough out on the perimeter. And this will, of course, there's about an eight-second differential between shot and uh, game clock, so BCU should get the ball again. Godwin for three, that's and that's off the front iron. Here comes Jenkins. tough shot. Righty shooter going left. Plenty of time here for BCU as Evans will take it out near the half-court mark. He's going to penetrate. Turns it into uh, double team. Wade's got it, and they're going to get a foul on Evans on the floor. Smart foul, actually. Yeah, because it's only the fifth. It's only the fifth, and it keeps the run out from yep. happening. No, it was a smart foul. And it was only his first foul. So ODU have 2.9 left with a one-point lead to try to make something happen. Not yep. a good offensive possession there for Marcus Evans, but as you said, smart play to commit the foul, knowing that they still had one to give. ODU trying to throw it up. Xavier Green's got a chance to get a shot off, and he does get it off, but it's not going to go. He's well covered there, and well, almost made the shot. Well covered, and a well played first half for the visitors from Old Dominion, trying to snap a five game losing skid with a one point lead at the break. And we'll come back with the halftime numbers and some highlights and some festivities. This is NCAA basketball from Learfield IMG College. Get ready for the start of the second half. Scott Jackson and John Vines team with you. Old Dominion with the one-point lead at the break. VCU will have the first possession to start the second half. John, and what do you think we might see for adjustments for both of these squads? Well, I, I think that I'd like 
to see if I'm Mike Rhodes, I'd like to see VCU get Santos Silva more involved early in the offense. Whether he shoots the ball or not, make the offense go through him. Don't settle for threes. Neither team shooting threes very well. But get Santos Silva more involved in the offense. If I'm Old Dominion, I want to keep doing what I'm doing. They're out rebounding VCU 21-13. Not a lot of offensive rebounds in this game. Total of four. But the way they're rebounding, they're keeping it at a half-court pace. And a kick ball gives the shot clock a little bit more juice. Back to 20 for VCU. Seal Dominion packing it in. And they've been playing zone quite a bit. There, you're normally a man-to-man -man team, but Jeff Jones says he wanted to give them some zone looks. And you see right away, they go to Santos Silva, and he draws a quick foul. It's an interesting jump he had there. Just he kind of really hopped. Looks like he jumped off his right foot and yeah. his left hand. Okay, let's watch it again. Maybe he didn't catch it clean there, but he did definitely he jumped off his right foot. Yeah, he definitely took some contact on the way up and going to try to convert from the free throw line. Four in a row now. Yeah, he's, he's on a roll. I'm just going to try not to talk about that, but he has now hit four straight from the line. He's got seven points to lead the VCU attack, and we have a tie ball game. Santa so Silva misses a second. You jinxed him. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Um, oh, it's my fault. Well, you said he had four in a row. Well, I did. I was trying to stay away from that. But I also said that they, they should want to get the ball into him, and they did. Curry almost lost it, but gets it back. Carver got it for him, but this was a problem for ODU in the first half. This too much from the shot clock getting burned down before wow. they get the shot off. Wow, he's There's hurt. a charge. Wow, and he hit the ground hard. Evans takes a charge, and Curry lands awkwardly. Hard to tell whether he came down on, on his, his hip. Let's take another look. We see Evans coming over to take that charge, which he did, no doubt about it. It looked like his right hip or his right knee. Yeah, when you see a guy roll on the ground like that, it's off of the hip because that's one of the least protected areas of the body. Well, he's sit, sitting on the bench right now talking to Coach Stith. I think he'd probably rather be looked at the trainer right now than have to have that conversation with the coach. Van with a strong take off the glass for his first two of the game. Early VC, Mike Rhodes made it clear he didn't want to come out selling for threes. So Isaac Van with his first two. Oh, there's a travel. A Jalen Hunter, this is... So going to be a dangerous time for ODU. With the this freshman. is that three to four minute period like that Jeff Jones has talked about where his team is just, as he's looked out at him, all he can think of to say is, damn. What a great move. That was a tough shot. Hand. That wasn't bad defense. That was a great shot. We're talking about the first half of Vance. Kind of had a sacrifice this year and hasn't gotten the offensive opportunities. But big bucket there and looked at the three for a second. Side to better. They are trying to play Santos Silva very physical every time he rolls off Sims the screen. Sims with a deep three, and he makes it good. So they've got a one, a two, and a three. 6-0 run to start the half. And eight points for Sims, almost a turnover there. But Hunter gets it across half court. First thing ODU needs to do is get a shot up, which they haven't yet. It's been a struggle for them to get in the half court offense. Xavier Green's going to have to make something happen with six on the clock. Picks up his dribble. Deep three from Godwin. And that's off the back iron, but rebounds Dickens off the glass. And good for the putback. That'll frustrate Mike Rhodes giving up that offensive rebound. Jordan Dickens has had himself a game. He's got six. We're talking about a guy who averages three. Santo Silva with a nice left hook shot in the lane. Never a bad thing for VCU when Marco Santos Silva touches the ball on offense. Santos Silva now with nine. Top score for VCU. End of the game for that matter. The shocker is he's only got one rebound. Yeah, he has not been as active on the glass. That's a credit to ODU for doing a good job. Dominant the glass so far. Hunter puts it behind his back. Gets it across to Carver for a... Surprising jumper from him, attempts. Yeah, I don't think that was the shot Jeff Jones wanted. That feels more like a turnover. Evans off the back iron of three-point attempts. ODU gets the rebound. Talking about Santos Silva with only the one rebound. The entire team only had 13 in the first half. Godwin's not afraid. They want him to take that shot. And another offensive rebound. 
There's a foul. foul as Hunter drives. Curry's going to get back in the game, so he's okay. It's a good sign for Old Dominion, certainly. And Louis uh, Zikpe is going to come in for Dickens. So Hunter checks out, Dickens checks out, and Zikpe. Jeff, and Wade coming in as well. Jeff Jones lecturing Hunter, freshman point guard, learning. And worth remembering, Jeff Jones in his day was a great point guard at Virginia. Played on Final Four team, 1981 with Ralph Sampson. He was just a terrific basketball player. There were some terrific UVA teams. Yep. Curry for three, and that's going to be off the iron. And rebound, going to be a foul on the rebound to Luke Zikpe. So it's a Zikpe second. Make that third. So as quickly as uh, he came in, he's going to have to go sit down as Aaron Carver's going to come back in. He's got a small ODU lineup right now. Well, the problem for the o ODU right now is they haven't got anybody who can score on the floor, or who is scoring. Only two points so far in this first almost four minutes into this half. Now he's used about strong. One up on a second chance layup. Evans goes behind the back. He's going to have to hurry. He's only four on the clock. He's going to force one up. He gets blocked. Oh, my goodness. And a shot clock violation. That is a shot clock violation. There was a lot of contact, but I think it came after the shot clock went off. DCU fans are saying, but we saw a foul. Well, there was contact, but I think it came after the shot clock went off. And that's going to get us to a timeout on the floor with VCU off to a quick start in the second half and open up a five-point lead with 16 minutes to go in regulation. This is NCAA basketball from Learfield IMG College. John Feinstein with the here's a look at that last shot clock violation by VCU. A lot of contact here as Crowfield's neck and uh, Jason Wade's arm got tangled up. Yeah, but the ball was dead at that point. But yeah, That's it was why a dead there was no whistle. Yeah, so that was the violation. So ODU off the violation, inbounds over their own basket. Sims defending Wade. Two points in this half. The first four minutes. Wade to the bucket and one. The Richmond native, Jason Wade. He does clearly feel comfortable in this building, doesn't he? He's played very well. He's now four for five from the field in a game where nobody's shooting particularly well. And I think all of his field goals but one have been going to the basket. He just kind of decides he wants to get to the basket and he usually gets it. He's a strong, aggressive kid. Jason Wade knocks down the free throw. He's got nine, leads all scores, and it's just a two-point game. Much as Mike Rhodes would have loved to have had him, he understood that he's got two parents who graduated from Old Dominion. And Isaac Vance is going to go to the line for two. Nice change of pace in the air there to draw that foul. He hung up there for a while. And the first foul on Xavier Green. ODU's racking up some team fouls early here in this half. With four now. That could be a factor. Knocks down the first. last ten minutes of the game. So VCU's going to get Bones Highland and Vince Williams in the game. For Sims and Marcus Evans is going to sit down as well. Van hits the second. So Isaac Van true on both of them. Of course, he's an 89% free throw shooter. You'd expect that. And a lead back to four for the Rams. One of the things this pressure VCU puts on has done hasn't created that many turnovers necessarily in the backcourt, but it shortens the clock. They're just getting into their offense now with 15 seconds on the shot clock. Yeah, this is what ODU struggles with the half court offense. We've talked about it a lot. Nothing comes easy for them in the half court. And of course, on Xavier Green. Curry's going to have to hurry so he can get it off. He just gets it off. It banks it, it in. Wow. Malik Curry, big bucket. Tough shot there by Curry with maybe a second on the shot clock. Yeah, nine on the clock. Of course, ODU fans wish he would have beat the clock against James Madison. A ball to Highland with a three. The freshman comes in and knocks down a big three. Bo Tyler comes off the bench firing. 
Rhodes Island is not afraid of the moment. They played big time against Purdue and Tennessee with the steer. Curry and Highland both Wilmington, Delaware natives. Going at it a little bit of this. Wow. That's a travel by Wade. Now it's getting loud here at Siegel Center. Got going a little bit too quick there, Wade did. Putting all that pivot foot. Keyshawn Curry in for Isaac Van for VCU. So VCU with the second five in there right now. And no rest for the weary with ODU when they bring in that second five. It's a that walk. That was a travel, yeah. yeah. But Vince Williams just lost his balance. Trying to turn away from the basket. Old Dominion's going to get some size in the game. Jordan Dickens is going to check in to replace Aaron Garver. Dickens has played, played well tonight. Yeah, Dickens has had a good game, and that was something that's been a little frustrating for Jeff Jones is he's not gotten a lot out of his two bigs. But tonight, at least he's got one of them going to Dickens. Well, he said that the problem they've had in the half-court offense is that they often feel like they're playing four on five because the bigs have not been scoring at all. Dickens is a true seven-footer out there. His ODU big size advantage in the post. He takes on Corey Douglas right away with a hook shot. That's going to be off. But rebound by Malik. He commits the foul, no field, and He gets fouled by Dickens, yeah. That was a frustration foul by Dickens. He did not take a very good shot there. He is not a spin into the lane guy. He didn't get deep in enough. He yeah. didn't get it as deeper in. And then he magnified the mistake by committing the foul, and that's already 14 fouls on ODU. For Dickens, it's his second. Ooh, that was a carry. Highland <laughs> might have got away with one there. What we call a 21st century high dribble. Curry covering Highland. Wilmington, Delaware on Wilmington, Delaware. Nice dish to Corey Douglas with the easy two. That's a seven point game. This is an absolute critical time in the game for Old Dominion. Game could get away from them right here. If Largest they can't lead score. for VCU or any team for that matter at this point. He's only four on the clock. I don't know if Wade knows. He's going to jack up a three. Not going to get it to go. Rebound. VCU. Here comes Highland pushing. If they score here. Jeff Jones is going to need a timeout. Steal by Wade, though. And they did. Throws it ahead to Green. And Green gets it taken away by Curry, but it's going to be last touch by Curry. Still good play by Curry there. Really good play by take Curry. Take away the fast break. And the fans are letting him know about it. They appreciate his hustle. Transition defense again. Both teams have been really good at not allowing the runouts. Yep, that was a runout, but Wade took it away. I mean, Curry took it away. Let's get another look at it. Here's Curry just flying into this play here. Gets the hand cleanly on the ball. Green didn't get it clean, it. but I think he also felt Curry coming from behind. And a seven-point VCU lead right now. Every possession becomes really important for Old Dominion. Deep three from Green, and he's got it. The best shooter has a chance to shoot the ball. You want him to shoot it. Xavier Green's now got nine. For the post, Corey Douglas left hook shot. It gets blocked by Dickens, and Wade tips it. Last touch by Jason Wade. And at 11.50 on the first or the second half, we got a timeout on the floor. It's VC with a four-point lead. There's the nice dish from the freshman to Corey Douglas. This is NCAA basketball from Learfield IMG College. Welcome back to Siegel Center as we get a look at the upcoming schedule for Old Dominion at Illinois. That's a significant game, John, because they'll have A.J. Oliver eligible for the first time, the transfer from Clemson, followed by a home game with Richmond, University of Maryland, Eastern Shore, Middle Tennessee, and then UAB. So a couple conference games at the end of this schedule as they go into the early yeah. part of 2020. They start their conference schedule with Middle Tennessee, perennial power in Conference USA. At Illinois will be a tough out for them. Illinois lost to Maryland at Maryland by one today. Uh, and then Richmond is off to a great start. Their only loss 
so far this season is to Auburn up in Brooklyn, and they beat Wisconsin in that same tournament. The A-10's off to a terrific start this year. Well, back here at Siegel Center, uh, VCU with the four-point lead and possession with 14 on the shot clock. 11.50 to go in regulation. Scott Jackson and John Feinstein here with you. Malik Crowfield puts up a deep three, and he's good. Nice design out of the timeout for Mike Rose. Nick Crowfield a three. VCU has a bunch of guys, so if you give them space, they will make threes, and Crowfield is certainly one of them. And that's a that's turnover. That turnover by Xavier Green. Green panicked a little, dribbling toward the double team. Tried to get it off too quickly, and no, just threw it away. Seven-point game. And a turnover by Old Dominion, so a chance for VCU to extend the lead. Highland attacking Hunter, gets a baseline shot, Crowfield again! He's on fire, he's knocked two in a row now. That time he was guarded. Wade was over there. And there's the smell of blood in the water. Green gets it across. Pressure starting to affect ODU. Like double digit water lead. dripping on your head for 40 minutes. Yeah, biggest lead of the game. BCU up by 10 now. ODU once again struggling to get their shots off, but. Green puts up a long three, and that's not going to go. Well, Highland did a good job getting out there to get a hand in his face before he released it. Made it a tougher shot. Here's the man with a hot hand, Crowfield. He was almost going to take the step back, but he lost it. Smart play, though, when he bobbled it to not shoot. Hook shot from Corey Douglas can't go. Dickens with the rebound for Old Dominion. Jason Wade. Kicks it out to the corner, three, and that's way short by Hunter. But Wade keeps the possession for Old Dominion. Tries to go up, but it gets a shot blocked. Here comes VCU on the run out. Curry's going to attack, and he's going to put it in for a 12-point VCU lead. And Jeff Jones is going to call timeout as VCU is hoping this thing up with 9.48 to go. Well, that was the three or four minutes that Jeff Jones has been afraid of all year. VCU's got it to a 12-point lead. Let's get another look at the big bucket from Crowfield. This is NCAA basketball from Learfield IMG College. Back here at Siegel Center, VCU's opened up a 12-point lead. Keyshawn Curry right before the ODU timeout gives it their largest lead on that run out. Yeah, aggressively going to the basket. ODU didn't want to foul, and Jeff Jones was up before the ball came through the net calling timeout. This was the kind of thing, well, every visiting coach that comes here right. says they want to avoid, and certainly Jeff Jones and ODU has done a good job avoiding it until this point, but now a 12-point uh, advantage for VCU on that uh, scoring run of eight. Well, and, and the good thing from VCU's point of view, Mike Rhodes felt that in Florida, when they got into tight situations, they started to fight the game. They were trying to do too much. Their spacing on the floor wasn't that good, and that's why they lost two close games against good teams but games that were winnable. Here they got the situation against a good team that was playing exactly the way it wanted to play, but they did fight the game. They kept doing what they knew they needed to do to get control of the game. Curry's getting frustrated with Bones Highland, the defense, and we're gonna foul off the ball of Keyshawn Curry, I think, holding Jason Wade. That's Curry's first. It's only the third VCU team foul. I think Curry got him as he was trying to cut through the lane. Yeah, he did get him on the way around. I mean, Wade is just relentless, too, running through there. He's so strong. Not an easy guy for a freshman guard. Not at all. Again, he's only hit one shot all Deep night. in the shot clock. But Curry somehow gets it to the glass and in, and one. Malik Curry, fancy move. This is the kind of improvement that Jeff Jones needs to see, particularly from his guards, as they head for conference play. Nice crossover on Highland, and then gets it past Santos Silva. Thought the contact, too, did a nice job finishing that at the rim. Malik Curry, after an 0 for 11 at William & Mary earlier this week, 
He's having a pretty good game tonight offensively with 11. Well, and that's what Jeff Jones needs to see. He needs to see his team get better here in the next couple of weeks. Because let's face it, Conference USA is a one bid bid league. Yeah. So those are the games that matter. They just need to get better before the games that matter. This game matters because it's a rivalry game. It's a different kind of matter. And this is this and the Illinois game are probably the last two quote statement wins ODU can make before conference too. Yeah, that's gonna be a foul of Bo Highland. That's the thing. In conference USA nowadays. Statement games aren't really statement games. I mean, right. 27 games last year. So if they hadn't won the conference tournament, they wouldn't have played in the NCAA, which is probably unfair, but that's the way it is. They tried that screwy schedule last year where the top five teams played each other right. the last two weeks. They're going to do it again this year. It's designed to try to get the league an at-large bid. It won't. No, it's, it's not going to work. But as you say, this is why these games, even though they hurt to lose them, but... They don't really hurt you, per se, because you're not really in that world. So, miss from Curry. Here comes Evans. It's different for VCU. Sims with a three, and that's not going to go. Wade can't get the rebound, though. Santos Silva keeps it alive. No, now Curry has it for Old Dominion. Curry's really played well tonight after that off the game against William Mary. He's been strong to the hole. He's definitely a... Guy will battle. There's Godwin. Can't buy Way one. off the mark. He can't buy one. They're going to get Carver over the back. Godwin, by my count, is now one of nine in the game. Yeah, he has been, it's been a season long struggle for him. He's had a couple bright spots with shooting, but overall, he has had a tough time knocking he, out shots this year. He's one of those players who's being asked to play an entirely different role this year. He's not just. Coming in off the bench to supply some offense. He's got to give them offense every night. And they really need him to keep shooting. <laughs> Profield again as three threes is him for Malik Profield off the bench. He's got nine. No, they do need him to keep shooting. He's got to have a green light for them to have any chance on it. It's a bright green light he's got right now. He's in a red light when he's been shooting. Yeah. Godwin, not afraid. Give him that, and he oh, buries yeah. the corner three. That, that's why you want a shooter to keep shooting. Marquis Godwin. Stolen away by Wade, and over the back. And yeah, Silva just tripped. Silva. I don't think it was intentional, but... Uh, fifth foul on VCU. And that's the third foul on Santos Silva as Marquise Godwin hits a big shot from the corner. And Old Dominion trying to chip away here and not let it get away against VCU. This is NCAA basketball from Learfield. I Welcome back to Siegel Center. Scott Jackson and John Feinstein as we look at the upcoming schedule of VCU. Missouri State a week from tomorrow followed by at Charleston on the road at Wichita State. Loyola, Maryland, and four of conference play. When we, yeah, when they hit the and conference these play. these next three, there's not an easy out. Missouri State, very solid team out of the Missouri Valley. Charleston, probably the favorite in the Patriot League this year. Earl Grant does an excellent coaching job there. And then, of course, Wichita State, which is now part of the Big East, on the road, will be a very difficult game. So this was the kind of schedule Mike Rhodes wanted to get his team blooded for A-10 play. By the way, that last shot by Marquise Godman was not a three. It was countered as a two. He must have been on the line. So that's why it is a 54-43 game right now with uh, VCU on top by 11. Strong take from Xavier Green for two. He's got 11. Mike Rhodes is turning around saying, where was the help there? That was way too easy. You don't see that yeah. often happen in a VCU defense. So ODU's got it under double digits once again to nine. Curry takes it. He gets got a jump, jump ball. ball. Yeah, good defense by Hunter. Jalen Hunter got his hand in there. He definitely had his hand on the ball. Question was, was there any body contact? See well, if we get another look at it. Not a surprise, but the fans here think it's a bad call. I'm shocked that the fans think it's a bad call. And, of course, it's Old Dominion's ball on the rotation. So, 
6.40 and the clock ticking. ODU down by nine. Still hanging around. But they have not uh, exactly tapped out of this one yet. Oh, Xavier Green almost it right off his foot and got away with it there. That was close. Godwin's going to pull this one to three, but that's not going to go. He was feeling it, having made one in a row. But as we said, that he's got to keep shooting because they just don't have very many offensive weapons. They really don't have many options. That's why you know, when A.J. Oliver comes back, that'll be a help. Have another shooter come off the bench. He's available. Be a bigger help if they could slip a mod caver in there in a different uniform. Okay. It's only four on the clock. VCU's got to hurry. Dariante Jenkins would get it off. He does, but he's not going to get it to go. Aaron Carver with the ODU rebound. Not a terrible possession, if only because it killed 30 seconds. And Green stepped on the end line there. That's a bad turnover for Old Dominion with 5.46 to go and down nine. You see, you can afford to be patient on offense, as you said, with the clock now working against ODU a little bit. And you don't want to get out of your offense. But the last possession, when they were trying to get a shot, didn't get a very good one, but at least ran 30 seconds That's off. a good That's shot, a good but it doesn't, but it doesn't go. go in. He wants Santos Silva to block like that, but he couldn't get it to go. Here comes Hunter, cutting through the defense, laying it up and in for the freshman. Jalen wow. Hunter, wow. Santos Silva got tied up there with Ezekiel and couldn't get to the basketball. It's a now seven point Mike game. Rhodes wants a timeout. A seven point game, 5 10 to go. Mike Rhodes and VCU take timeout. The lead was 13. So it's a 30 second timeout for Mike Rhodes. Yeah, ODU's, as you said, hanging around. And that's what you don't want to let a team do. Because remember, it's another look at that Godwin shot that eventually was called a two. Might have been that our eyes got deceived a little bit by the new line. Well, there is three lines now. It there is a little bit confusing. <laughs> but you know how you sort of have a, a feel for what's right. three without looking? But that feel has changed this year right. because the line's been moved back. No doubt. And, it's, and here in particular, when you get the three lines, sometimes it gets a little confusing. But a lot uh, of buildings have three lines yeah, now. They do. And uh, it was only a two for Godwin, but I'm sure he was just happy to see something go in because he's had a tough shooting he, night. He'd have taken a one. Yeah, good point. But it's a seven-point game. VCU out of the 30-second timeout with the basketball. See what Mike Rhodes drew up during the timeout. Because I guarantee you they're going to run a set play. And I would think it might go into Santos Silva. No, maybe not. Curry's going to attack. Marcus Evans, oh, excuse boy. me, attacks and throws it away. Slipped. Evans was oh. looking on the wing for Sims. And Sims was three or four feet further back. Mike Rhodes not very pleased about that possession. No, not at all, especially out of a timeout. Turn it over that way. Big possession here for Old Dominion. Godwin thought about it. Now he's going to take it. Tough shot, and he buries it. But that's another two. Now, I've commented a couple times on how he shoots with his right hand going to his left. He obviously practices it because he takes that shot all the time. Makes it a five-point VCU lead. So do you hanging around. Isaac Van for three, and he buries it. Big one from Isaac Van for VCU. Doesn't it seem the offense runs a lot better when it goes through Santos Silva? Sure does. There's a turnover by VCU. Don't forget to miss it. Oh, boy. Gary Maxwell saw a foul. And it's one and one now for Old Dominion. That was a big break for Old Dominion. It was, because it was going to be a layup, could have been a building was going to explode. Could have been a run out, layup 10 point game instead. One and one coming the other way for Jalen Hunter. Gary Maxwell, veteran referee, I tend to trust him. Marcus Evans may not trust him as much. I don't think Marcus Evans like to call it off. Jalen Hunter, 71% free throw shooter to the line. Jason Wade's going to check in for a minute. Give Xavier Green a quick breather. Marcus Evans and Gary Maxwell have agreed to disagree. Jalen Hunter knocks it good. Jalen Hunter's giving ODU some good minutes. 
He's Here got a lot half. to learn as a point guard in terms of his floor game, in terms of keeping his head up and not dribbling too much. But you can see why Jeff Jones wanted it. He's giving him his minutes right now instead of Curry. I'll be interested to see if he gets Curry back out there. And as you like to say, with the lights on, he's not intimidated. And there's a near steal. And just to make things even, Gary Maxwell called the foul on Hunter. And he definitely got a piece of Isaac Van Gamble in there for the steal. But that'll be side out. That was his team foul six, but the next one will be shooting for VCU. He'll be shooting every foul the rest of the game. Both teams. 4.08 to go in regulation. Six-point VCU lead. Side to Santos Silva. It's doubled. But he turns it over. He, he waited too long. That's a walk. Yep. Oh, good job by Marcus Evans, the defense, to get in front of Hunter to make him travel. Hunter tried to reach over with the ball still in his hand, and that caused the travel. We got a timeout on the floor. VCU with a six point lead. We got a fantastic finish here tonight in Richmond. This is NCAA basketball from Learfield IMG College. Welcome back to Siegel Center. A few moments ago, senior Isaac Van for VCU. Knocked down a big three, John. Yeah, nice pass there again. Good alert, quick pass from Santos Silva. On the next possession, he wasn't as quick and ended up turning the ball over because he got double teamed. VCU the six-point lead, 3.49 to go in regulation. Scott Jackson and John Feinstein here with you. This is the point in the game where you, you don't want to rush anything but you want to run your offense. You don't want to just dribble, dribble down to 10 seconds and then end up taking a bad shot. If there's a good shot, quickly you take it. You, worry, you don't worry about the clock till you're inside two minutes. Jeff Jones sticking with Jalen Hunter, a point guard, the freshman. Santos Silva with a hook shot, and he gets it to go. That's the kind of play they like to run out of the timeout. Santo Silva's got 11. Nice soft lefty hook. It's another shot he's worked on in the gym for ODU hours. almost throws it away, but Xavier Green ends up with it. But once again, ODU had a hard time getting quick offense as the shot clock's already halfway down. It's Barber. Court pressure will do. Wade's going to attack as he often does. Puts it up, can't get it to go, but the rebound from a zick pay. He can't get the bunny. And Santos Silva gets a rebound. Big possession there. Had two looks inside, couldn't get the ball to go down. And now the clock's under three minutes, and the lead is eight. Big defensive stop for VCU there. Mike Rhodes wanting his team to spread the floor in terms of their spacing. Oh, do you get the final group of subs ready at the table? But we're going to see Curry. Foul away from the ball, and that's seven. So it'll be one and one. One and one coming up for VCU. Shooting the rest of the way. ODU's got three subs coming in, so Hunter's going to leave the game. Malik Curry will finish it off at point guard. Marquise Godwin back in, and also DeJour Dickens. I was a little surprised there after the timeout that Jeff didn't come back with both Curry and Hunter because they've both been pretty effective offensively tonight. Now it gets him in for the final 236 of regulation, but an eight-point Deficit making a nine point deficit now. Santos Silva knocks down a big free throw. Santos Silva is now six for eight from the line tonight. He's not as deliberate as Patrick Ewing was, but he is deliberate. He's definitely worked on slowing it down. The process has gotten better. With those results, there's no, no yeah. one's going to rush it. Looking good. 10 point lead now for BCU with 2.36 to go. A lot of urgency needed here in this possession for Old Dominion. I think they want to try to get Green a shot here, don't you? You would think that's the guy you got to get it to, but Isaac Vance on him. Best defender for VCU. You got to go with your best. Godwin's going to take it two, and he's going to miss Marcus Evans with the rebound. Well, he got a shot for a shooter, but he didn't make it, and now you start to work the clock. About to go under two minutes. He's, you might have, or excuse me, old, old you might have to start fouling soon. But here goes Santos Silva off the back iron. Wade's got the rebound. Mike Roach doesn't mind that shot except for the result. Wade's dribbled through the defenders, almost lost it, throws it out in a backcourt. 
Well, that's a backcourt violation. Doesn't matter who. Either off. way, yeah, it didn't matter. It's a backcourt either way. ECU ball here in front of us. You almost caught that. You had a better chance of catching that pass, John. Absolutely. I would have got it. So 146 to go. VCU ball and a quick foul. Get a foul Finally right current. away. Yeah, you got to do that at this point. Got to try to extend the game. VCU's got to take care of business on the free throw line as a team. VCU this season uh, just shoots 62 percent. Excuse me, 72 percent coming into the night, shooting 72 percent. And the right guy on the line too for VCU, Marcus Evans. About a 70 percent free throw shooter. Docks in the first. And they only have to shoot one more and one and one after this. We've got to be dozen. Evans, nice one of the veins, knocks them both down. Seven points for Evans. VCU back up to a 12-point advantage. I think that matches their biggest lead. Curry with a crossover. He's going to hurry, kicks it back out. Green thought about the long three, so it passes it off to Godwin, he's got to hurry. Almost turns it over. Dick is with a hook shot, and we're going to get a foul. He did get fouled, no doubt, but he did use 20 seconds on the clock there before they got the shot up. Yeah, really good defense to make ODU work for that, but that's kind of been the story of the night. They've not had any quick offense, at least no. half four possessions. Gotten a total of five points on fast breaks in this game. Off the back iron from Dickens. Godwin's gonna sit down. Alphys Pavalafis checks in, the sophomore from Greece. Obviously a shooter. Carver back in for Dickens. So Malik Curry commits the foul. That's his fourth. I think point of getting some of the subs in was a foul. And that'll be the last one and one in the game for GCU. Marcus Evans, the line, he already buried his last two. Shot the last two like he was shooting at the end of practice. Santos Silva's going to sit out. Corey Douglas is going to come in for VCU. A little offense defense there. Don't want Santos Silva to pick up a fourth foul late. Douglas also the best shot blocker. Evans Trues. Buries the first. Makes it a 12-point game with 1.22 to go. And Curry with the second. So None of those free throws came anywhere close to the rim. So Evans knocked them both down. Malik Curry rushing the ball up in the traffic. Just throws it up in the air. And that could have been a jump ball. After the rebound. Clean steal. And I think this one's over. Yeah, I think so too. And there's a foul. Evans will get to add to his total. So you hung around for a while. The BC with a really strong second half. Well, they were down one at the half, and they're up 13 now. They've outscored them. Here you see really nice defense to not foul there. And again, no foul there, clean steal. Well, both Evans and Douglas, terrific job getting up and causing Curry to lose it. Well, this is sort of the opposite of the game uh, last year when Old Dominion dominated the second half and ended up winning by 10, and in this half, it's been 37 to, let me do the math, 23. 38 to 23. So Evans in double digits now with 10. 108 to go. Hunter back in for Curry now. If they don't score here, I think Jeff Jones will call off the dogs. And there's a foul there's by a foul. Xavier Green after the steal from Isaac Van. Isaac Van so tough uh, defensively. That could have been called a, a breakaway foul, but instead it's just a two-shot foul for Van. The double team out front for a second, they drop it off, and then Van just jumps oh, the passing lane. So Isaac Van 
A 89% free throw shooter to the line. I think we're going to see VCU's free throw percentage go up as the season goes on. Because late in games, they're going to have the veterans on the court in close games. These guys do not look like they're going to choke, do they? No, they do not. Bam. Two big free throws. Of course, he had a big three part of the run for VCU in the second half. So VCU is going to prove the record to 7-2 at ODU. It's going to be a six-game losing streak. Three and seven. seven, and they got to go to Illinois on Wednesday. Ooh. Tough one there. Xavier Green in and out. Dickens gets it to go, and he gets fouled. I can tell you from personal experience that Champaign, Illinois is not an easy place to get to. Yeah, that's going to be a tough one. They, as you said, they played a great game today against Maryland. Led most of the game before losing uh, up in College Park. The good news for ODU will be, though, that you get A.J. Oliver will be available. They can start getting him into the rotation. And obviously start gearing up for conference play, as you pointed out. I mean, it's really what it's all about for all the Conference USA teams. Yep. Three-point play for Dickens. And a couple of years ago, Middle Tennessee State was ranked the entire season, lost in the conference tournament. Had no chance to get that large bit. Because the committee would rather take a 19 from the ACC. Steal by Wade. Nope, foul by Wade. Yeah, he fouled it for sure. Wade has played very hard tonight, as he always does. Jason Wade, the sophomore from Richmond. He's in Trinity Episcopal. Average just a shade under 10 points a game and three steals. I would think his dad's not happy with the outcome today, but he'd be very happy with the way his son played. Absolutely. Isaac Van, by the way, in double figures for just the third time this season with 10 now for VCU. The thing about Isaac Van is he doesn't force things. No, he doesn't. He doesn't look up and go, oh, gosh, I've only got six points. i got to shoot. He takes shots when they're there, and he did that tonight. And again, he takes the toughest defensive assignment on a nightly basis for VCU. Usually thrives with it. Godwin off the glass. Jeff Jones is going to go home with plenty of timeouts left. I think they'll just dribble it out here. Yeah, he's telling his team to pull back. VCU hearing it from the fans here at Siegel Center as they're going to pick up a win tonight. Snapping that brief two-game losing skid. After the week off, VCU comes back, gets a win tonight. Over Bible, Old Dominion here at home. Mike Rose and Jeff Jones shaking hands. Good friends there. Progress for Old Dominion. Good win for VCU. Yeah, really nice win for VCU tonight. And, you know, get a little bit more time off. And then before you know it, we're going to be in Atlantic 10 play. January 2nd, they open against Fort. We'll take a timeout. We'll come back, get a look at the final numbers and some final highlights. VCU winner tonight over ODU. This is NCAA basketball from Learfield IMG College. Back here at Siegel Center where VCU beats ODU 69-57 tonight. And uh, Scott Jackson and John Feinstein here with you. John, as you look at this game tonight, I mean, ODU hung around for a while, but VCU had that big run, obviously, in the second half. And ODU just could not generate offense because that VCU half-court defense yeah, is they, so strong they, tonight. VCU picked up their defense, and as often happens, Scott, good defense leads to good offense. They did not shoot the ball especially well in the first half. But in the second half, they got a lot of good looks at the basket, some in transition, some from outside. But they made 11 out of 20 overall, and they were 6 of 10 shooting threes. Here you see Santos Silva with a pretty little hook. And they just got good shots. They spaced the floor much better than they had in the first half. They didn't rush anything. They made the extra pass. Here you see to Corey Douglas for an easy layup. And here you see Crowfield who made two of these in a row. And that was during the streak when ODU opened up the the lead. That It had been a tight game. ODU was actually up one and a half. They broke it open to 12. ODU managed to get it back to six. But veteran team showed that it was a veteran team there in the final few minutes and again made some big shots from outside as I said 6 out of 10 shooting from the 3 point 
line, whereas in the first half, they were 3 out of 12. That made a big difference. A lot of contributions here for people. You mentioned Crowfield at the 9 off the bench. You had Santos Silva with 13. Evans had 10. Isaac Van had 10. So it was like a lot of different people. And it was in a night where Dariante Jenkins never got going offensively. That's how good his VCU team is. Well, that's how deep they are. Yep. They, they don't, they, they, they're not dependent offensively on one guy. Santos Silva is the leading scorer. They want to get it inside to him. Marcus Evans needs to be in control of the offense. But they can get a lot of different guys into the scoring column in, in a given game, especially, as I said, when they're able to turn up the defense the way they did in the second half. Well, VCU gets a week off. Of course, that's good because they got exams this week. And uh, they'll get Missouri State back here at Siegel Center a week from Sunday night. Well, that'll do it uh, tonight. VCU, a winner over ODU in the 95th meeting between these schools by the final of 69-57. For our entire crew here from Siegel Center, Scott Jackson for John Feinstein saying good night. This is NCAA basketball from Learfield IMG College.